What are you doing? Wendy impatiently opened her eyes and turned around to look at her surroundings. She looked at Laura unhappily and asked, Where's my son? Marshall went to answer the phone and will be back soon. She lowered her head and did not dare to look into Wendy's eyes. Oh. Wendy nodded and then looked sideways at Laura and said, Have they come back with the results yet? What did the doctor say? Laura bit her lip and forced a smile. The doctor said it's not a big deal, but we have to stay in the hospital for observation. Since you have nothing better to do than try and control my life, let's go home. Wendy said unhappily, It is hard for my son to make money, and I cannot waste what he does have by sitting here and building up a hospital bill. It's okay, Mom. We have dual income, and I want you to have the best health. Just sit back and take some deep breaths and relax. Laura advised. I know you have a salary, but you cannot afford this. Everything is used from home care, and I know you don't have any extra to spare. Wendy curled her lips. If I say I want to leave, then we will leave. Mom. Just as Laura did not know how to convince her, Marshall returned, done with his call. He came to Laura and smiled. Laura, what did the doctor say? The doctor said it was a small matter, nothing to worry about. Laura looked at Wendy and gently pulled Marshall's sleeve. She said in a low voice, Marshall, can we go out in the hallway? I have something I need to talk to you about. Is there something that cannot be said here? What would we want to hide from my mother? He frowned. This is not an appropriate time to act this way. Laura reminded Marshall in a low snarl. She wanted to start swearing, but kept her composure. How long did they have to be married for him to understand things like this? Marshall was about to speak up with a rude remark, but once he saw Laura's anger, he began to understand. He hurriedly helped Wendy get comfortable in her bed. Mom, ring if you need anything. I just remembered... I have a home matter to speak with Laura about. He gave his mom a kiss on the cheek and walked off. Wendy looked at Marshall suspiciously. She wanted to say something but stopped. Okay, I will wait here for you. You guys come back quickly. Okay. Marshall turned back and nodded as he and Laura were stepping out of the doorway. Marshall pulled Laura to a corner and asked, What is happening? Marshall... I want to tell you something, but please prepare yourself. Laura bit her lips, looking troubled. What's wrong? His face immediately became serious. Just say it. Mom, she, she. What's wrong? Didn't you just say that she is fine? Marsha hurriedly grabbed Laura's arm and asked. Laura looked at Marshall sadly and spoke. Actually... The doctor said that she is already in the late stage of lung cancer. What? Marshall's hand that was holding Laura's arm suddenly tightened. His stomach dropped, and he felt like his world was about to end. However, just as he wanted to ask more about the situation, he suddenly saw a figure flash past him. Before anyone could react, they suddenly heard a loud snap in the middle of the silence. Laura looked up and saw Wendy's ferocious face suddenly rushing towards her. She felt a sharp pain on her cheek, and her body unconsciously took a step back. She did not care about the pain on her face and tried to reach out as Wendy slipped and her body slowly fell to the floor. Mom! Marshall quickly helped her up. He looked at his mother in surprise and asked, Mom, what are you doing? Wendy was so enraged, she did not hear a single word her son had just said. Instead, she looked fiercely at Laura and opened her mouth to scold her. What a perfect little lady you are, but you do not fool me. I thought you were being suspicious just now, so I followed you out here. Good thing I did. I knew you were hiding things. How dare you talk about my medical information behind my back? You really thought you could hide this from me, you tramp? After saying that, Wendy was so tired 
that she was gasping for breath, but that did not stop her from continuing. You also just lied and said I had lung cancer. To tell you the truth, Laura, I have never been sick. To think I treated you well through all of this. I did not expect after I went to the hospital for a checkup, you would actually tell my son I have cancer. What kind of person do you have to be to lie about somebody's health? You are the worst, and I hope one day you die a long and painful death. Laura covered her swollen face in the spot that was slapped by Wendy as tears welled up into her eyes. She bit her lip to avoid an outburst. Everyone else said that when a person is about to die, their words are very kind. It was obvious that her mother-in-law did not fit that mold. Laura wanted to argue with Wendy and yell at the top of her lungs. She wanted to vent all the grievances that she had suffered these past few weeks. When she came back down to earth, she remembered that Wendy was still in critical condition. So she restrained herself indefinitely. She was doing it all for her husband. Mom, what are you doing? Marshall asked again as he looked over at Laura, who was trembling. He was very confused. Did his mother really have lung cancer? How was this possible? His mother's body had always been tough. All he noticed recently was like coughing. What am I doing? I am taking care of your awful wife. She wants me to die. She will take everything from you and sleep with another man tomorrow. Wendy glared at her son and tried to get him to cower under her. She changed her tone to display her disappointment. I have already told you, I don't like this woman. She deserves to be beaten up and taught a lesson. She wants to off me and you don't even care. This is a hospital. Please don't make a racket. Just as everyone was staring at Wendy and her snarling face, a cold voice passed through the noise and reached their ears. Everyone could not help but be curious and peer in the direction of the sound. They saw a tall figure walking over. He wore glasses with golden lace, and the eyes behind the glasses emitted an elite light. There was an angular face, narrow eyes, and a straight nose. He strolled with tight, pursed lips. For a moment, Laura was stunned and blinked her eyes, trying to focus the image. This person was so familiar. Was he the young and promising doctor who treated her grandfather years ago? She saw Jason walk to the front of the crowd unhurriedly. He had just returned with Timothy and Anton. They had gone to a nearby park during lunch hours and tossed around a football for half an hour before Jason had to leave to resume his duties. When he put on his white coat, he heard a noise coming from the corridor. As he walked over, he heard Wendy's ridiculous comment about hitting a woman. Originally, everyone had formed a circle around the group to watch the show. When they saw the man, they automatically opened up a path for Jason to walk over. Laura was still staring blankly, not knowing what to say. Jason did not recognize Laura. If you asked him what he remembered about this girl from some time ago, he would have said that she was a proud young child full of arrogance. He would not expect her to become a haggard housewife who let a lady yell at her in a public space. What's wrong? I was teaching her a lesson. Is that against the hospital laws here? What authority do you have? Does your family run this hospital? She was being sarcastic and rude. She knew she couldn't be as direct to this doctor, but this was not going to stop her. What can you do to me? When Jason heard Wendy's words, he lightly laughed. Ma'am, you must be very knowledgeable. Suddenly, there was a burst of stifled laughter from those in the surrounding area. This crazy old lady did not know the weight of her words. This was Jason Carter, the department director of the entire hospital. But which hospital in Harburton wasn't? Everyone was whispering, but the one that stuck out to her was, she must have a death wish. Hearing Jason say this, Wendy puckered her lips and stubbornly said, well, if it is your family's business, what can you do? I am here to see a doctor. You should be better to your patients. Then may I ask you, 
Are you here to see the psych department? Jason was usually too lazy to argue with others, but he was in a good mood today. He suddenly wanted to punish everyone who was unreasonable and ignorant. He may as well play along with this woman. How can you say that? Marshall was the first to react. Was this man insinuating that his mother had a mental problem? Oh, Jason was in a good mood. He said, since you are not here to visit the Department of Psychiatry, then maybe I should take you there since you are acting so out of hand. He said this and Laura and Marshall's mouths both dropped open in shock. I am clearly not sick, but she lied and said I have lung cancer close to the middle or late stage. My body has always been in its best condition, so how could I be that sick? When Wendy said this, she glared fiercely at Laura, who looked away and did not speak. Only then did Jason look at Laura. He did not recognize Laura, but started to slowly walk towards her. She hurriedly stepped back. She would never have expected to see this gorgeous, tall doctor again, especially under such circumstances. Jason came in front of Laura and expressionlessly took the frontal test results and the CT pictures from her hands. After frowning for a while, he looked at Wendy indifferently and took them off to the side. The cancer cells have spread, invading the organ tissue at the upper chest area. I am guessing you have experiencing chest and shoulder pain, along with the possibility of difficulty in moving your upper limbs. At the same time, I saw your upper eyelids hanging down, pupils contracting, eyeballs concave, and no sweat on your face. So, when Jason said this, he deliberately paused for a moment and then said, so your daughter-in-law might have wanted to comfort you because your symptoms are already far in the late stage of lung cancer. It is recommended to stay for a conservation treatment that will help you with the pain, or you can go home. He knew that death was on the horizon, but ethically he could not say that word. No matter how rude this lady was, he knew that when patients heard this from the doctor, it was as if the doctor was giving them a death penalty. All hope would leave their bodies and no professional wanted someone with a terminal illness to act that way. Jason gave Wendy a meaningful look. He then stuffed all kinds of test sheets and pictures back into Laura's hands. He turned around indifferently and left. At this moment, Wendy, who was unwilling to believe the truth, finally began to panic. Her body trembled and suddenly felt pain all over. She did not even have the strength to stand anymore. Was she going to die? Was she really going to die? It is not easy for her to raise her son, and she finally reached the age where she could enjoy life. What did she do to deserve terminal lung cancer? Wendy was so scared that her legs went soft, and with a plop, she fell to the ground. Mom, are you all right? Marshall quickly bent down to help her up. Son, save me. Wendy was shaking. She opened her mouth and her face was full of fear. I don't want to die. I can't die. Please save me. Mom, we will do everything we can to take care of you. Marshall held Wendy's hand and almost cried out in pain. Laura? After Wendy received Marshall's guarantee, she pounced on Laura again. Laura bit her lips. She knew the pain of losing her loved ones and did not want to see anyone go through it. Regardless of a slap and some rude words, Wendy was still family, and Laura knew in her heart she still loved her. She walked forward. Laura, save me. Save me, okay? I don't want to die. It was my fault just now. It was my fault. I shouldn't have hit you. Tears rolled down her face she no longer had the same crude expression she had been hosting all day. Mom, even if Marshall and I have to sell everything we have, we will try to save you. Laura looked at Wendy and shook her head to confirm it all. You cannot touch my son's money to treat my illness. When she heard what Laura said, she immediately panicked. She used her pair of withered hands to hold Laura's wrist and spoke. My son worked so hard to save that bit of money. You cannot touch it. Laura, isn't your father a professor? Your mother also has a small company. 
Your family must be rich. I heard from Marshall that your family still has a few more houses. Can't you sell one of those to pay for my treatment? Laura heard this and was stunned. How could she act like this? She would do what she could to help her, but to ask her parents for money was not what she expected. Laura knew that her parents would be kind enough to help, but she was still in shock. However, it wouldn't make much sense if she didn't touch the money that Marshall had earned, but instead wanted to take advantage of the money that her parents had spent most of their lives saving up. Laura, say something. Go and borrow money from your parents to treat me. I will do anything. I will praise them forever. Please. I... Laura opened her mouth, but in the end, she still said, Marshall and I will take out the money to treat your illness. If it's not enough, I will talk to my parents. You cannot touch my son's money. No, your parents will help us. Go now. Wendy saw that Laura did not agree and immediately burst into tears. No, mom, don't cry. Marshall quickly went forward and comforted his mom. He looked at Laura with disdain. My mother's already in a bad state. We can have these talks later. But, Laura gritted her teeth. Her parents had raised her for so many years. Other than going over for New Year's Eve and giving some gifts, she had not done anything to give back to them. On the other hand, Marshall not only gave all of his money earned from his work to Wendy, but also often used her salary to subsidize his relatives and friends. To top it all off, the house that they lived in was bought by her and her parents before their marriage. Under such circumstances, Laura's parents would have sometimes give Laura some money to buy some more clothes and help her stay afloat, but she did not like asking for money. Laura shook her head. Her father and mother had never enjoyed Marshall due to his lack of respect. It stood true because now they were asking to sell the house? How could she treat her father and mother like this? I am not really asking your parents to pay for my mother's treatment, but you have to be more sensitive to the matters at hand. Marshall looked at Laura and his tone was filled with anger. Laura, I thought you would know better. I... Before Laura could say anything, Wendy, who had been crying, began to gag and threw up a mouthful of blood, staining the floor red. Mom! Marshall and Laura cried out in panic. They quickly supported Wendy and got her to the emergency room. In front of Anya's office door, Alexandra held the invitation in her hand and did not know if she should go in or not. It had been three days since Anya and Timothy met. During these three days, Alexandra had been avoiding any interaction. Her heart was in a mess, and she did not know how to face her. In exactly a week would be Timothy and Melissa's wedding anniversary. Alexandra couldn't help but be in an ethical dilemma. Should she give Anya the invitation in her hand? She stood there still, but finally got up the courage to do what was right. Now the question was how to do it. Should she give it to her expressionlessly and then turn around and leave? She could also sit down and have a good talk with Anya, which could save their friendship. She just did not know what to do. Alexandra stood there frozen. She was about to knock on the door when Quentin, who was holding some papers, walked behind her. Alexandra, why are you standing here? Quentin held a document in his hand and asked gently. Alexandra heard his voice and quickly turned around. Quentin! Hello, he nodded to Alexandra. Are you looking for Anya? Alexandra quickly nodded. Yes, Anya gave the dress she designed to Melissa, the wife of Timothy Godot. Coincidentally, I went with her that day. I feel that since Anya is the designer of the dress, well, I would want her to see her own work displayed in public if it was me. So I suggested to Melissa that she should invite her to attend the anniversary party. Quinton heard Alexandra's sincerity towards Anya and could not help but smile. Alexandra, you are very thoughtful. He also received the invitation for the wedding anniversary dinner and was shocked that he did not think of this. Actually, it's not really a big deal. Alexandra scratched her hair 
and immediately forgot about the incident from a few days ago. Then go on in. Call me if you are free, and then we can talk about our business. Quentin nodded, indicating that Alexandra should go. Our business? Alexandra asked in surprise. What business do we have? Anya can wait a few more minutes. Tell me more. After Alexandra said that, she lowered her head in embarrassment. If that's the case, Quentin paused for a moment and shook the information in his hands to Alexandra. Do you remember that we were working with Annie Lee to film advertisements and shorts next month? I remember. Alexandra nodded. She still remembered that because of Anya, she had a falling out with Annie in the office. She let out a small sigh. For a friend to do what she did, she would have to be among the best. They have scheduled the music video and advertisements that you and Annie will be shooting for two weeks from today. Because of the products you two are endorsing, my dad asked me to be in charge of the filming activities. Thinking of this, Quentin sighed. His father really did find any excuse to make his designs so obvious. He was the general manager of Sunderby Styles, but now he was in charge of the filming of the two models. If it is not because of Alexandra, what else could it be? Quentin, you are personally in charge? Alexandra shouted out in surprise and joy, realizing that she was too excited. Alexandra quickly lowered her head. Sorry, Quentin, I got a little excited about it all. It's okay, Quentin shook his head. Alexandra was lively, cute, and had a big heart. He enjoyed her presence. So when the times are announced, I will inform you both in advance. Yes, yes. I will have my notifications turned on 24-7. I am on standby at all times. Alexandra said seriously. Quentin could not help but laugh. He raised the corner of his mouth and smiled. Suddenly, Alexandra felt like she was bathing in the spring breeze. All right, I have nothing else to say. Go and tell Anya about the party. Quentin looked at the door and his eyes slowly darkened. Ever since he drove Anya and Anton home that day, he had not seen her. He did not know if she was okay. Seeing Quentin looking at the door of Anya's office with concentration, Alexandra's eyes also darkened. After a while, she nodded. Okay, goodbye, Quentin. After Alexandra finished speaking, she slowly turned around. She stretched out her hand and wanted to knock on the door of Anya's office. Alexandra? Huh? When she heard Quentin call her name, she quickly turned around, afraid that she would miss every word he said. He looked at Alexandra, who was looking longingly in his direction, and pondered his thoughts for a moment before saying, Alexandra, I just wanted to echo what I said before about you being a wonderful person. You can be friends with Anya without any grudges, and you are always thinking about what is best for her. I really respect that. I do it all for you. Alexandra was crazily shouting at Quentin in her heart. Anya would be fine if I were happy, right? Alexandra wondered if anything would change if she did end up with him. In the end, Alexandra still did not say what she was thinking to Quentin, because she was afraid that he would have too many burdens if she made things more complicated. It's just simply friendship. I would do anything for Anya. Alexandra pretended to be relaxed and smiled. I would love to talk more, but I really need to find Anya. Go. Quentin nodded and turned around to leave. Alexandra looked at Quentin's back for a long time before she turned around. She took a deep breath. Since Quentin still cared about Anya, she had to continue to help him. Alexandra thought long and hard and eventually knocked on Anya's office door. Anya opened the door and saw Alexandra standing in front of the door. She quickly pulled Alexandra's hand in surprise. Alexandra, it's been a while. Ever since Anya left with Quentin that day, this was the first time Alexandra took the initiative to look for her. It was like they had a connection because at this same time, she was going out to look for Alexandra herself. It was perfect timing, and Anya was ecstatic. Facing Anya's enthusiasm, Alexandra only looked at her with a complicated gaze 
and slightly struggled to join hands with her. At this time, Anya also felt Alexandra's cold attitude and let go of her hands in embarrassment. She lowered her head and did not know what to say. Here, this is the invitation for Timothy and Melissa's wedding anniversary banquet. Alexandra handed the invitation over in a cold manner. Anya looked at the invitation and did not reach out to receive it. She agreed to go to the banquet because she did not want to reject Alexandra's good intentions. Now, if Alexandra did not want to be friends with her, then what would be the point of going? Seeing that Anya did not accept the invitation, Alexandra angrily slammed the invitation on the table and turned around to leave. Anya jumped a bit at the slam and observed her attitude as she walked away. Even if she stopped Alexandra from leaving, what could she say? Anya could not tell anyone about her and Timothy's past. If she asked Alexandra not to leave, she was certain a question about it would come up. So it was better to give up. Friends could also have secrets. This one went too deep and was involving mutual parties. It was too much of a mess. It was better to keep some things buried deep in your heart. When Alexandra walked to the door, she did not see Anya move a muscle. At that time, she was angry. She could not help but stop her footsteps and turn around to look at Anya. She angrily questioned her, I am about to leave. Shouldn't you try to grab my arm and stop me? Ah, uh, Anya stood where she was and did not react for a moment. Being your friend is really tiring. Alexandra helplessly shook her head. Just as she was about to leave, she felt a pull in her heart. It was not only because she wanted to take care of Anya for Quinton, but also because of this period of time together. She found that she already thought of Anya as a true friend. It was only because of Quinton that their friendship was scattered at times. She really did have full intention to cut ties with Anya, but as she reached for the doorknob, she heard a little voice in the back of her head telling her to stop. Anya, that day you and Timothy were weird. Then you left with Quentin, and I was left with them. Even if you don't explain it to me, did you not want me to stop from leaving just now? In order to find a way out for herself, Alexandra looked angrily at Anya. I... Anya opened her mouth and quickly went forward to pull Alexandra's hand. It's too late now. Alexandra angrily pulled her arm back. Alexandra. Anya sighed and then looked at her and said seriously, Although I cannot explain things completely, I want to tell you two things. First, I have nothing to do with Timothy right now. Secondly, I have nothing to do with Quentin either. It was just what happened that day was too sudden. I was not prepared. That was why I did what I did. I already explained what happened and how things cannot go further with Quentin that night. Of course, Alexandra didn't understand what Anya said. Just because she told her that Timothy was not in her life now, did that mean that there was not a past? She looked at Anya tentatively. Really? Did you really explain it to Quentin? Really? Anya nodded and promised. Alexandra finally let out a sigh of relief. She weakly sat on the sofa and said, Anya, don't mind me. I really like Quentin. Seeing the two of you leave so intimately, I would be lying if I said it didn't make me uncomfortable. I understand. Anya nodded. Alexandra was the same as she was back then. In the past, she also was obsessed with Timothy. For any woman to get close with him, it would be heart-wrenching pain. She truly knew how Alexandra was feeling. However, Anya did not wish for Alexandra to follow in her footsteps. Therefore, while keeping a distance from Quinton, she would try her best to protect her. So, you really aren't related to Timothy then? After settling Quinton's matter, Alexandra asked about the next most important thing. Do you know after that meeting, Timothy actually proposed to donate a building to Anton's kindergarten? What? He wants to do what? Anya stood up in shock. How do you know that? That night, we had dinner with them after you left. 
Timothy said that word for word, I am sure whoever works for them that at that late hour started the research that night. Alexandra looks suspiciously at Anya. She slowly realized that this may not have been the best thing to bring up. Hearing Alexandra say so, Anya fell into deep thought. The last time Timothy saw Anton, she was also perturbed for a long time. However, these few days had passed and he did not make any moves. Every day when Anton went home from school, she would ask if anyone came to his school and asked to see him. Each day, he would say no. Anya was worried because she knew that Timothy was a decisive man. Usually, he would do things in a swift and decisive manner. Since he hadn't done anything, it meant it was unlikely that he would find Anton again in the future. With that being said, why did he talk about donating a building to the kindergarten? Seeing Anya deep in thought, Alexandra asked again, Anya, could it be that you really do have some kind of relationship with Timothy? Anya moved her lips. After a long while, she explained, Alexandra, I'm sorry. I really can't say anything. Please believe me when I say there is no kind of relationship between me and him. I don't want to have anything to do with him in the future. Alexandra's gaze lingered on Anya's face for a long time before finally nodding helplessly. All right, since you do not wish to tell me, I will not force you. But when Alexandra said this, she looked at Anya and said very seriously, it's just that Timothy and Melissa are very lovey-dovey and they're very good people. So I don't want to see their relationship crumble from anything other than their own doing. Alexandra had known them for some time now. She knew that they were in love and they were a strong couple. She was very envious, so she felt that it was her duty to protect such a beautiful love. Facing Alexandra's words, Anya's heart hurt. She really wanted to tell Alexandra. The beautiful love between Timothy and Melissa was built on her pain. Did she really have any obligation to bless and protect their relationship? Anya could not say anything. She could only nod under Alexandra's serious gaze. Seeing her confirmation, Alexandra finally felt relieved. She patted Anya's hand. All right, now that all the matters have been resolved, I'm going to head back to work. Alexandra stood up and reminded her again. Three days away. Don't forget to attend the anniversary celebration. When she asked her to attend Timothy and Melissa's party back then, it was entirely because of Anya's work. But now, Alexandra had another goal. She wanted to show Anya how loving Timothy and Melissa were. She needed to make sure that Anya knew she could not ruin their marriage. Thinking of this, Alexandra picked up the invitation card that was placed on the table and said, I will hold on to the invitation for you. I will call you that morning to remind you. Alexandra was afraid that Anya would find an excuse to lose the invitation and not attend the banquet, so she took all matters into her hands. All right. Seeing Alexandra take the invitation back again, Anya felt a headache begin to set in. She originally wanted the excuse of misplacing the invitation to avoid attending, but Alexandra saw it right through her. Alexandra let out a sigh of relief as she turned to the door. She never thought of herself as a good person, but she wouldn't say she had a black heart either. She was just a woman who was tied up by the secular world and was troubled by love, but still yearning for beauty. Even if she did not have other motives for doing things, Alexandra felt that she had a clear conscience. Anya, don't be so dejected. Things happen for a reason. You cannot hide from the future. Perhaps after this experience, you will feel more relieved. Although she did not know what she was talking about, Alexandra was proud of herself for advising Anya like a true mentor. Anya shook her head and did not pay attention to Alexandra. She could only calm herself down. If anything, at least this would be a good time to have a conversation with Timothy. She could test how much he really knew about Anton's identity. In the afternoon, three days later, 
Anya picked Anton up on time from the kindergarten and they went home. She was preparing dinner for him when her phone began to ring. Just as she picked up the phone, Alexandra's voice rushed over. Anya, where did you go? You didn't answer my call. I went to pick up my son the moment I got off work. Anya asked in confusion. What happened again? Today is Timothy and Melissa's wedding anniversary. And it is also the day of your Starry Sky exhibition. The banquet is about to begin. Why are you here yet? Alexandra asked anxiously. Huh? It's today? Anya frowned and tried her best to remember. I told you three days ago, right? Alexandra said, Oh, I forgot. Anya smiled bitterly. Then hurry up. Alexandra kept feeling that Anya could not grasp how important this was to her. But I, I don't have a dress. Anya muttered. Besides, isn't this banquet going to be very grand? Why is it only a night party and not on the weekend? Because Melissa's health is not good. Timothy arranged time-wise so that she would not get too tired. Alexandra was very anxious. You don't have a dress? Well, luckily, I have an extra one here. I will set it out for you. You just need to come over. But... There are no buts. I've been so worried about you. What else do you want me to do? It's not like I designed the starry sky. This was all you. Hurry up and get over here. After Alexandra finished speaking in succession, she hung up the phone. Hello? Hello? Alexandra! Anya took the phone away and saw the screen had turned black. She turned to look at Anton, but knew she could not leave him alone. However, he looked like he knew everything. He calmly waved his hand. Mom, go and meet Auntie Alexandra. You can get a new boyfriend. I will stay at home and read and wait for you to come back. Anton, how did you learn to talk like that? How old are you again? And why are you talking about Mommy getting a boyfriend? Anya stared at Anton. She realized that her son's temperament had become more and more obvious after living with her. That is for me to know. Anton stood up from the chair and said, I'm full. I'm going to my bedroom to read. Bye, Mom. He turned around and walked into his small room. Anya watched him walk away and did not know whether to laugh or cry. She turned to look at her room and sighed. In the end, she took her bag to go downstairs as she texted the landlady to let her know what was happening. Anya found a taxi and went over to the address Alexandra had provided. When Anya arrived there, the banquet had not started yet. She stood at the entrance of the hall and looked at her casual outfit. She did not know how to get in or where to go. Miss, we are holding a banquet here. Please leave. A waiter looked at her dejected appearance and said expressionlessly, I... Anya opened her mouth and told herself to forget it. She knew if she didn't want to go in, she didn't have to go in. Anyway, since she was here now, and the waiter was not allowing her to go in, she could still give Alexandra an explanation later. Anya thought about it by luck and turned around. Before she took two steps, Alexandra's angry roar came from behind her. Anya, what took you so long? At this time, Alexandra was right in front of Anya. She saw the white princess dress with white crystal high heels that Alexandra was wearing and got nervous about this fancy party. Her hair was tied into a bun. The best part were her dangly diamond earrings that sparkled in the lights. Even the dim light in the front hall was sparkling, this much more than Anya expected. Ah, uh, Alexandra, there you are, Anya accompanied with a smile. Why are you so late? Alexandra looked at her with a disapproving glare. There was a traffic jam on the road, so I had a delay. Anya gave Alexandra an embarrassed smile. That's enough. Quickly, follow me. Alexandra saw the time, and she directly pulled Anya and was about to walk toward the hall. At this time, the waiter standing at the entrance of the hall pulled Anya in the opposite direction. He turned his head to look at Alexandra and said awkwardly, Miss Lynch, this miss does not have an invitation card and also is in the completely wrong attire. This young miss's invitation card is with me. I have already prepared the formal dress. Alexandra used her round eyes to stare down the waiter. The banquet is about to begin. If my friend is not able to change into a formal dress in time, it will be your fault. Ma'am, I understand. 
The waiter looked at Alexandra and quickly took a step back to make way for Anya. Alexandra coldly snorted and pulled Anya into the hall. You wait here for now. I will go get your dress and then we will go to the room next door to get you ready. Alexandra instructed Anya and quickly ran off. Anya was like a wooden puppet. Alexandra left and she followed her directions. No matter what Alexandra said, she also kept nodding her head. Actually, her heart was in a mess. She did not know what to do. Looking at Alexandra's back as she left in a hurry, Anya stood on the spot weakly and waited for her to come back like a puppy. Anya stood there tapping her foot. How long did it take to grab a dress? She casually looked at the tip of her toes and suddenly realized that her white canvas shoes had been stained with a patch of dirt. She squatted down and went to take a tissue from her bag to wipe it. At this moment, a pair of red high heels that were 10 centimeters tall suddenly appeared in the front of her face. Anya, who was squatting, was almost frightened by this pair of strange red high heels. She staggered backwards and finally managed to hold her hand on the smooth floor to stabilize herself. She calmed down and looked up to see a woman with a cigarette and a face full of makeup sneering at her. Anya was shocked because of that eerie sneer. She quickly stood up and took a step back to take a closer look. Only then did she realize that the woman in front of her was Annie. It was so late at night and the makeup was so thick that even ghosts would have been frightened by the face in front of her. After Anya ridiculed Annie in her mind, she smiled and greeted her. Miss Lee, how are you? Annie was wearing the newest designer dress from New York Fashion Week. There were large patches of beautiful red flowers embroidered onto her weightless nude dress. The branches and green leaves spread to the corner of the dress. It was the huge red protruding flower that was the true eye-catching part. Anyone could criticize her overly smoky makeup, but no one could change the fact that Annie had been in the industry for years and people praised her. Anya could imagine the headline now. Annie Lee shows out in flowery red dress. Another predictable article would pop up tomorrow and people would go crazy over it. However, Annie's following actions completely ruined any bit of admiration that Anya would still have for her. Annie faced Anya's greeting and acted as if she did not hear it. She circled her a few times before pretending to be enlightened and said, Oh, so it is you, Anya. I thought it was some janitor lazing around and not doing their job. Anya already knew that when Annie appeared in front of her, nothing good was going to happen. She also did not know why Annie found a sense of contentment in ridiculing her. She could only shrug her shoulders and ignore her remarks. Annie, do you not have anything better to do? She laughed. Aha! Uh -huh. What else should I expect from a dog? When your owner is around, it's all bark. But the minute Mommy Alexandra leaves, there's no bite at all. You've lost your toughness, Anya. Or was it just a lack of courage from day one? Annie, does this really make you feel better about yourself? Anya really did not want to talk to her anymore. Do you think you are worth any emotion from me? I'm a star. And you are a nobody. Annie stared at Anya. This made her, who was already wearing smoke and makeup, look even more ferocious. Then please stay away from me, okay? She did not want to waste any more time and turned around to face the wall. This is a huge party for the Godots. You are just a small employee. Why are you here? Annie was not willing to let it go. She blocked Anya's path and asked suspiciously, Why are you really here? It was Mrs. Godot who invited me here, okay? She did not want to waste her energy explaining things to Annie. She knew that her coming to attend the wedding anniversary today would definitely be full of twists and turns. But did it have to start this way? What a joke! Annie heard what Anya said, and it was more disbelieving. She laughed coldly and pointed at her face and said, <laughs> What kind of person are you making Melissa out to be? She is the most gorgeous and normal woman in Harburton. How could she possibly invite a lowly person like you to her wedding anniversary? Then who knows what your gorgeous and noble lady was on that day, but here I am, an invited guest. If you don't believe me, then go investigate it yourself. She shrugged her shoulders and followed Annie to cause trouble. I am too lazy to investigate. I will just chase you out. After Annie said that, she immediately shouted at the surroundings. Security, where did security go? 
quickly, come over here. This is a person who sneaked in here. Why is your security team so bad? Hurry up and get her out. However, the security guards did not rush over, but Leslie did. Leslie showed up in a flashy two-piece pattern suit. It was navy with white embellishment and tiny gold stars. It lifted the atmosphere and drew attention. He walked over with a goblet in his hand and a cynical smile on his angular face. Leslie came in front of Annie and said discontentedly, Annie, where have you been? I have been looking for you for a long time. Leslie, you came at the right time. Annie immediately held Leslie's arm and pointed at Anya. Our hosts did not invite her. She is trying to sneak in. After hearing Annie's words, Leslie turned his eyes to Anya. Anya was wearing a white t-shirt, jeans, and canvas shoes today. Her slightly curly black hair was tied into a ponytail. It was simple and refreshing, and it was a clear contrast with the surrounding women who wore luxurious clothes. Since Leslie knew that Anya was some kind of connection to Timothy, his attitude towards Anya had become even more respectful, so he smiled. Anya, hello. Hello, Mr. Lynch. Anya also politely nodded at Leslie. However, Annie, who was at the side, saw the harmonious side of Leslie and Anya. She was so angry that her face was the color of a tomato. She called Leslie over not to greet Anya, but to have him help her chastise her. Leslie! Anya pushed his arm unhappily. Did you forget what I said to you just now? What did you say to me just now? Leslie asked seriously. Leslie, what's going on? Annie saw that Leslie was busy greeting Anya and forgot about what she had said. Her anger grew. I told you that Anya snuck in. We should kick her out. Hearing Annie say this, Leslie did become a bit suspicious. He looked at Anya's attire, and it did not look like she arrived with the intention of attending. So he asked, Anya, why are you here? Oh, she had some sort of relationship with Timothy, too. And Leslie didn't understand any of it. She is talking nonsense. Anya said straightforwardly, I would not do anything to hurt Alexandra. Seeing Anya speak with a clear conscience, Leslie paused and did not ask anything further. With his understanding of her, perhaps the truth was not exaggerated as Annie was trying to make it. You only know how to lie! Annie snorted in annoyance. You scheming bitch! When Anya heard that Annie was still insulting her, she could not help but wish to respond. You accuse me of being a scheming bitch? Annie, you are a liar. You use your clout to manipulate the people around you, which makes you the scheming bitch. Anya opened her mouth and wanted to refute loudly. At this moment, a mocking voice came over. I say, Annie, did you not get a lesson in my office that other day? Did you come again today to be an eyesore? Anya turned her head and saw Alexandra standing there with her arms crossed over her chest and staring coldly at Annie. Behind her stood a person who was dressed like a butler. In his hands were several boxes. It must be the gown and shoes that Alexandra had prepared for Anya. Excuse me? Leslie took a step forward. Although his tone was blaming, his voice was very soft. Brother, can you not be like this? Take a look at Annie. What is so good about her? What makes you keep holding on to her? Alexandra loudly asked in front of Annie. It's not like you really like her. It's just that she looks like Jen. Shut up. This was the first time Anya saw cynical Leslie speak so loudly to Alexandra, scaring Anya into silence. Leslie stared at Alexandra, his thin lips tightly pursed, and his gaze became deep. If you don't want to explain, then don't. Why don't you so fiercely protect her memory? Alexandra muttered. Although she knew that her brother loved her, that woman's name had always been taboo in Leslie's hearing. She did not expect that after so many years, her brother would still not let go of it. Alexandra, I still need to discuss the collaboration with Sunderby Styles and Timothy. You guys can have fun here. Leslie took a deep breath and relaxed a little. Remember, watch your words and stop fighting. After saying that, Leslie turned to walk away with a wine glass in his hand. However, 
Annie suddenly reached out and grabbed him. She looked at him and asked in a daze, Ah, Leslie, who is the woman, Jen, that Alexandra mentioned just now? His entire body stiffened. He pulled his arm out of her grasp, and his tone was somewhat irritated. Don't ask what you don't need to know. Just stay here. I don't. Annie grabbed Leslie's arm again, and her voice started to choke. This time, Anya could tell that Annie was not pretending. She was truly sad. Leslie took a deep breath and continued to coax. Be good. Take your hand away. I won't. Annie's tears rolled down. That woman, Jen, is her last name Lad? Leslie's expression immediately changed. He grabbed Annie's hand and his eyebrows suddenly shot up. You are investigating me? How can I have such resources that I'm able to investigate you? Annie smiled bitterly and asked back, Do you know that when you sleep, you call out for her by name? Hearing Annie's words, even Alexandra was stunned. No way. It had been years. Her brother actually cared so much about her that even when he was sleeping, he called for her? Leslie froze on the spot. After a moment, he said, You must have heard wrong. I didn't hear wrong. Annie suddenly became worked up. Not only did you call that woman's name when you were sleeping, even the jewelry and clothes you give me have been her style. Annie, his voice instantly became much louder. You need to calm down. However, she ignored his words and continued. I said I like modern styles, but you insisted on collecting 18th century Victorian jewelry for me to wear. I said I like smoky eye makeup, punk style, but you insisted on me putting on natural makeup and wearing a classic style dress. Annie said this and turned her desolate gaze to a solemn Leslie. She asked, Today you asked me to put on natural makeup, but I came here in my own style. From then on, you didn't want to talk to me. Leslie, tell me, if I am not a substitute for that woman, what am I? I'm leaving. He did not answer her. He just shook her hand away and turned around to leave. As she opened the two boxes, she saw a big red dress inside the first box. The one shoulder design was sexy and looked luxurious and graceful. The dress was perfectly tucked at the waist and the wide stylish skirt made people unable to look away. Next to the box that held the red dress, there was a jewelry box. This set of jewelry was made of pearls. The earrings made of two large pearls emitted a warm luster. The matching necklace was gentle and elegant. Alexandra was considerate to have pulled all of this together for her choosing. She had even matched the jewels well. Anya shook her head and turned her eyes to the other box. She saw that the other gift box was filled with a black dress made of layers of gauze. If she wore it, she knew she would feel beautiful. The black dress draped down to her feet. The shoulder was designed to reveal her delicate collarbone. The golden ribbon around her waist was bright. There was also exquisite lace that ran the length of the dress, and it had a bold design. Anya felt that the designer had a unique style. Alexandra had matched the black dress with a set of diamond earrings and a necklace. The diamond earrings were exquisitely cut and gorgeous. The diamond necklace was simple yet ornate. Under the lights, the set of jewelry reflected a dazzling display. So, which one will it be? Anya looked at the two dresses in front of her and felt a little awkward. Compared to the black dress, the red dress was still conservative. But it was for the anniversary celebration of Timothy and Melissa. If she wore the red dress, it might attract attention. Timothy would think that she was here to mess things up. Although she did not like them, she felt she had no choice but to attend their anniversary party. She most certainly did not want to be caught in the limelight. Thinking of this, Anya's gaze once again locked onto the black dress. But she shook her head after a second. This dress was really revealing. It was a knee-length design with lace. 
However, there were cutouts that exposed a long section of her torso, and the hem of the skirt slit was very high. Alexandra, where did you find these two dresses to bring over? Anya looked at her with some difficulty. Do you have any other dresses? These are the dresses that suit your style and body the best that I could find in my limited time. Alexandra complained discontentedly. Anya, your clothes are usually too plain. You have a beautiful face and a perfect body. You're always covering it up with a frumpy style. Although I'm a fashion designer, my favorite style is casual and comfortable. The most basic purpose of fashion design is to have people wear comfortable clothes. And after that, to look beautiful and elegant. So I have always abided by my own principles. All right, all right. Don't talk about your design concepts in front of me anymore. Anyway, I don't understand it. Alexandra pushed the two dresses forward and asked, Choose one for yourself. Which one do you want to wear? I still need my makeup artist to help you put on makeup. Then the black one. Anya hesitated for a while and finally chose. This was, after all, someone else's wedding anniversary. It was really a bit unreasonable for her to wear the red one. She would wear the black dress and hide in the crowd. As soon as she saw her starry sky displayed, she planned to immediately depart. All right, put on the dress first, then quickly come out and I will ask my makeup artist to do your face. Alexandra placed the box in Anya's arms and pushed her into the changing room. Anya looked at the box in her hands and sighed slightly. She was looking for trouble for nothing. Slowly putting on the dress, Anya put on the diamond jewelry and then pushed open the door and walked out. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. Alexandra was stunned as she circled Anya a few times and then praised herself. I really have a good eye. The clothes I picked are a perfect match for your face. Look at you, you're hot. Alexandra, you need to work on this narcissistic habit of yours. Anya shook her head helplessly. I have helped you so much, yet you don't want me to be proud of it? Alexandra tilted her head and ran out the door. Jack, come over and help my friend with her makeup. Just as Alexandra finished speaking, a flamboyant man walked in. He had a delicate mustache and wore his hair in an eccentric style. His entire body was covered in a flower motif. Anya found him to be beautiful. Miss, please come take a seat. Come, I will help you put on your makeup. Jack did not stand on ceremony and directly pulled Anya to sit in front of the mirror. He first carefully looked at Anya's face and nodded. You are a beautiful woman. It's just that your skin is a little bad. Remember to clean your skin often in the future. His words made Anya blush instantly. Jack's words were rather euphemistic. Her skin had been called well cared for in the past. However, Anya had recently brought Anton back to live with her and she still had work to do. She was very busy. Sometimes she did not even put on makeup when she went out. When she was tired, she did not wash her face. I will, thank you. Anya nodded obediently. Don't be nervous. I'm starting to put on the makeup for you now. Jack turned his face properly and faced the mirror. Yes, she nodded hesitantly, looking like she was waiting to be slaughtered. Jack smiled and picked up the brushes and started the makeover. After a bit, she began to feel a little sleepy. So she took advantage of this opportunity to rest. When she was in a daze, she was woken up by Jack's voice. Miss, your makeup is done. Open your eyes. Anya nodded and opened her eyes. Jack's makeup skills were comparable to plastic surgery. Under Jack's talented hands, her rough skin had disappeared and was replaced with a smooth, delicate porcelain skin. He had even enlarged her peach blossom eyes. Because of his skill with highlighting and contouring, her nose looked even more pert. Her originally smooth and tender lips were tinted exquisitely and complemented her skin color. This enhanced her complexion 
making her even more radiant. Jack had also styled her hair. Her long black locks were simply tied up in an elegant bun on the back of her head. The ends of her hair had been left free and lightly curled, making her look delicate and innocent. It was precisely this hairstyle that offset the flaw in the black dress that she felt was too revealing and might allow people's imaginations to run wild. Thank you. Anya stood up and could not help but express her gratitude to Jack. It's okay. Any friend of Alexandra is a friend of mine. He raised his delicate finger and smiled at her. Alexandra, come here. I have already finished with your friend. He walked out of the room and beckoned her. Be right there. Alexandra, who was rummaging through the magazines, heard that Anya had finished her makeover and stood up happily. She looked at the time on her phone and walked into the room. There's still enough time. The celebration has not officially begun. Alexandra happily walked into the room, and the first thing she saw was Anya standing there like a princess. She opened her mouth and shouted, No way, Anya! How can you look this amazing? You are stunning. Uh, With you looking like this, how can I still be friends with you? After Alexandra said this, she immediately walked in front of Jack and shouted, Jack, I'm supposed to go with her, but she looks so amazing no one will even see me. I'm already prettier than you. He shrugged his shoulders. To be honest, my young lady, I have tried my best to make you more beautiful, but this is the extent of your beauty. He joked. Oh, Jack, I'm going to kill you. You dare to say that about me. She jumped up and knocked on his head twice, in the way only friends can. Say I'm the most beautiful woman in the world. Say it now. Jack immediately gave in to Alexandra's debauchery. He quickly praised her with a half-sarcastic tone. Okay, Alexandra, you are the most beautiful woman in the world. That's more like it. And looked very proud of her uncontrollable accomplishment. Anya stood to the side and watched them mess around. A small grin arose on her face. Alexandra's friend was the same as her, unparalleled with sass that would always bite back. They both had kind hearts and were lucky to have one another. Once their friendly quarrel died down, Alexandra pulled Anya over and said, let's go. After showing up, Jack, there is not much more left for me here. Alexandra said with a wink in Jack's direction, Alexandra, you are ridiculous. Does your family know that you act this way? He said, pretending to be distressed. I know, and that's all that matters. She shook her head proudly and yanked Anya away. Bye! As Anya was being pulled away, Jack's voice echoed, but she could not make out what he was trying to say. They passed a pond in the garden, and before she knew it, they were at the entrance of the banquet. Anya, are you ready? Alexandra turned her head to look at her, and asked with a serious tone. What do I need to be prepared for? Anya asked curiously. Prepare to receive all the attention. You will have the gaze of every man and all the women will be jealous. Alexandra said as if she was sure it was going to happen. Take a look. Other than Melissa, there was no one else here that can match our level. This is her party, so of course she will have the attention but they will never be expecting beauty like ours to enter these doors. Hearing what she said, Anya automatically became speechless. If she knew Alexandra, there was no question that she was a narcissist, but she was calm and composed in the moment, ready for the spotlight. Anya, on the other hand, did not know whether to laugh or cry. She took a deep breath and began to cooperate. Okay, can you please go out first? Let your radiance cover me. No one will notice when I run to the corner. After Anya finished speaking, she gently pushed Alexandra over to the entrance area. She peeked out and the situation at the banquet was just as she had said. The moment Alexandra stepped out into the hall's entrance, everyone in the banquet hall turned their head 
and focus their gazes on her. She was originally a public figure and often appeared on the television screen. In addition, everyone in the circle knew that Alexandra was the daughter of the CEO of the Lynch Group. She had an impeccable model figure and a young face that was practically perfect. She always wore a stunning smile that showed her purity and kindness. The white princess dress added to her charm. The diamond earrings stuck out with her updo. To say it simply, she looked flawless. As soon as she came out, she attracted everyone's attention. Just when everyone was enthusiastically paying attention to Alexandra, Anya immediately lowered her head and stretched out her hand to pull up her skirt as she walked over from the side. However, even though Alexandra attracted the attention of everyone in the front, and Anya walked along the wall trying to keep a low profile, many people were entranced with her. Her head was lowered, looking at the ground, coincidentally displaying her exquisite and fair neck. A lock of curved bang in front of her forehead slightly bu- It gave off an even more mysterious aura. With a graceful figure, she carried the black skirt with both hands and tried to walk over to Alexandra's side. She hid in the crowd. This effort quickly ended as everyone stepped back, revealing her jaw-dropping physique. Everyone surrounding her was stunned. Whispers began asking who this mystery woman was. No one knew. Was she an upcoming artist? Maybe she was a reality TV star. Anya had walked away to a corner, fanning her face, glad that she was not noticed by too many people, when all of a sudden, a voice made her entire body freeze. Anya. When Anya heard that familiar and warm voice, she could not help but have a bitter face. She turned her head and politely greeted the person in front of her. Hello, Quinton. Quinton was wearing a stark white suit with golden embroidery on the collar. He looked glamorous and graceful. The most important thing was that the color of Quinton and Alexandra's outfits were matching. Anyone would see them as a couple. How could anyone say that they weren't destined to be together? Anya thought with a smile. Hello. Quinton nodded slightly, and his gaze involuntarily fell on Anya's collarbone. He forgot that she was going to be present tonight, but once he saw her, he fell into a trance. She was the most beautiful person he had ever seen. However, because of her personality, she always tried to cover up by staying very low profile with conservative clothing. The black dress that Anya was wearing today perfectly displayed her beauty. It made it impossible for any man to look away. The sleeves that dropped down her arm showed off her petite shoulders, while the chiffon that swooped down her chest and the fair skin of her waist made people's imagination run wild. Seeing this, Quinton frowned. He was suddenly very dissatisfied with the design. This dress was very good, but it was too revealing. Quinton snapped out of it and had to ask himself, why would I think that way? He knew this floor-length dress was the work of God. Anyone who wore it would look like a professional runway model and would command the attention of any room. When it was worn by Anya, his focus was not on the dress, but the person wearing it. Letting out a sigh, he felt speechless and helpless. She felt Quinton's gaze on her, but it was kind and made her feel safe. She thought of Alexandra and began to feel uncomfortable. She smiled at him and took the initiative to mention Alexandra to him. This could have never happened if it weren't for Alexandra. I am so lucky to be at this party and see the starry sky shown for the first time in public. Alexandra told me about this. Quinton nodded, and as he peered over and his gaze fell on her, I am very happy that the two of you have become good friends. Yes, I am so lucky to have her as a friend. She nodded and added, Quinton, Alexandra is really a good person. I hope that the person she likes will cherish her and protect her so that her life can thrive even more. Of course, Quentin knew what Anya meant, but he had already told her that he did not have any feelings for Alexandra. Did Anya say that to him in an effort to be their matchmaker? 
Seeing he frowned, she realized what was going on and quickly changed the subject. She knew she could not force people to have feelings. And to be honest, she did not have the right to be in their business. When she thought of this, she spoke up. Don't worry. I am not trying to set you up like the other day by the river. But 